Welcome to the Evangelism Podcast. I'm excited about telling people about Jesus, and today I have a very special guest, Dr. David Shibley, who is the founder of Global Advance. Thank you for being with us today. Daniel, it's always a privilege to be with you, and it's great to be with your audience as well. Thank you. Global Advance is an extremely innovative ministry. Can you tell us some about what you do and what your vision is? Our vision is to equip national leaders on the ground for the advance of the gospel in their nation. We exist to ignite what we call change makers worldwide to help fulfill the Great Commission in each of their respective locations to help turn that national church wherever we happen to be itself into a missionary sending church. So we equip pastoral leaders, we equip uh, marketplace leaders, uh, women uh, who many times even in Christian contexts are subjugated in one way or another in, uh, in many nations and then also the next gen, next gen leaders. So we are an equipping ministry for the purpose of bringing people to Christ, evangelism, and of course discipling them in the context of uh, that national church. I think one of the things that you do that's very interesting is the, the marketplace ministry. Right. Going and training national leaders who are involved in, in business or in the marketplace. How, how are you reaching Christians who are involved in the marketplace? You know, that has been an amazing open door for us. Uh, even in areas where the training of pastoral leaders has been uh, somewhat limited because of political situations in different nations, uh, always we have an open door to train uh, people in the marketplace. And so we simply bring biblical economics to bear. Best practices, outcomes, uh, expected outcomes. And we see tremendous openness. Uh, I think of uh, one West African nation where seven uh, Muslim businessmen came simply to hear businessmen from America and their principles of effective business and uh, they all went away believers in Jesus and so we're particularly thankful for how the Lord is uh, using this marketplace outreach that was really the vision of our current president uh, our son Jonathan who heads the ministry of global advance and is just doing a tremendous job along with a great team you've been doing ministry for quite a few years now, your whole life, I believe. Uh, tell us some about how you got started in ministry and how you really caught a passion for reaching the world for Jesus. You know, I had a very evangelistic father, uh, an evangelistic pastor dad who pastored in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His heart was to see people come to Christ. 50% of every offering every t ever taken at that church where he pastored, went straight to missions. He had a huge mission heart. And um, he went to be with the Lord when I was 15 years old. Of course, that was a very traumatic experience for me and for our family. And yet the Lord sustained us in such a magnificent way. And uh, out of the heartbreak of all of that, and I was 15 years old searching, uh, where is, as Michael W. would say, my place in this world. And uh, the Lord uh, just met me in, in those days in a marvelous way. And when I was 16 years old, he called me to preach. And the pastor of uh, our church at that time, after my dad had gone to be with the Lord, I shared that with uh, our pastor. And he said, well, why don't you uh, speak next Wednesday night at the prayer meeting and uh, after I do? give a quote sermonette is what he called it. So I did, but there happened to be a Methodist pastor who was in the audience that night and he had compassion on me or whatever and invited me to preach at his church the next Sunday. And it just began to snowball and I began to speak at youth camps all over the, uh, the, the middle part of our country in Kansas and Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. And Daniel, it's just never stopped. I've, I've always had a vision to reach people for Christ. I've uh, had the privilege of ministering as an evangelist, but also pastoring churches in Arkansas 
and uh, in Oklahoma. But I started preaching when I was 16 years old. That was 54 years ago now. And the Lord has uh, sustained me. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. I've preached in the world's largest church. I've also preached in little uh, huts in, in the middle of Central Africa, as have you. And uh, always just the joy of standing as a representative for the Lord Jesus Christ has, has always been the same, no matter the context. I've been privileged to preach to thousands of men and uh, Promise Keepers events in large stadiums. Uh, one night in Minneapolis uh, at a Promise Keepers event, I was privileged to be the, the gospel presenter that first night. And we saw a thousand men that night make professions of faith in Christ. I'm just deeply grateful for all that the Lord has done. And uh, I, I just stand back in awe and say this is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. Never lack for places to preach. But some of those are uh, because I've made opportunities for preaching at uh, uh, rest homes and uh, Sunday school classes. Never saw any occasion for the ministry of the gospel to be small or inconsequential. All of them count and all of them are important. And now I just love more than anything else uh, passing on to the next generation and uh, prayerfully some of that evangelistic fire that is on you and that by the grace of God I have received a portion of that as well over the years of imparting that uh, to the next generation to get the gospel out. That's got to be our great, great passion, the overarching passion of the church, to get the gospel to every person. I love the watchword of, uh, of different mission movements, uh, the gospel for every person, and uh, a church for every people group on earth. That's my heart as well. Well, I remember when I was just starting out in ministry, I was very young, you had something that you called Days with David. Yeah. And you invited me and a group of other young evangelists, young preachers here to Rockwell, Texas to, to spend some time with you. And, and some of those principles that you, you shared with me have, have really helped me uh, in, in building the ministry and, and helping me to, to do what God has called me to do. And I, I just so appreciate your, your leadership and, and, and your wisdom and how you you have a passion for pr passing on the principles you've learned to the next generation. What are some of the, the, the leadership principles that you think are really important to pass on? I think this generation in particular is uh, very committed to authenticity. And even though they may violate that principle themselves, uh, they certainly want to see it in their leaders, particularly spiritual leaders. And so everything that we do, Daniel, has to come out of this overflow of personal intimacy with Jesus. And so uh, foundational to everything as I uh, try to impart to younger spiritual leaders, Christian leaders, is that daily time of intimacy with the Lord. Uh, getting into His Word, letting God speak to you through His Word, uh, letting the Holy Spirit minister to you, and then uh, intercession and prayer and praise and worship, all of that together, the reading of classic Christian books. Uh, I love many of the, the wonderful authors today and I read several of them, but uh, uh, this generation also needs to be familiar with uh, Oswald Chambers and uh, men and women, uh, Elizabeth Elliot and her writings, and those that have really shaped uh, Bible-believing Christians, evangelical Christians, over these last 50 uh, to 100 years. So I'm, I, I'm just very grateful. I, I'd say just keep walking with Jesus. I love what Dr. Bill Bright taught. He, he said it was a transferable concept of uh, keeping short accounts with God, what he calls spiritual breathing. That any time the Holy Spirit in any way shows you anything in your life, any thought, any action, any words that dishonor the Lord in any way, that you immediately confess and forsake that, uh, acknowledging with the Lord that this has no place uh, in my life as a believer. That's what that word literally means in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess, it's the Greek word homo legeo, if we say the same thing 
about this sin that God says about it. In other words, if we don't try to uh, excuse it, but we fully own up to it, we say that's not to have a part in my life as a believer, if we confess our sin, then God is faithful and just to cleanse us from all sin and uh, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dr. Bright said that by the confession of sin and repentance, uh, he called that spiritual exhaling, and then inhaling by receiving the forgiveness of God and a fresh fullness of the Spirit of God to uh, do our assignment not in our own uh, capacity, but beyond our best efforts in supernatural capacity, the power of God's Spirit within us. You are really a visionary looking into the future at, at what God wants to do in the world. What are some of the things that you think our generation should prepare for that God wants to do in the years to come? I do believe that uh, uh, the Western world and the United States in particular, the church in America will no longer escape uh, uh, persecution. We have experienced harassment, uh, but certainly not um, frontal persecution as have so many of our brothers and sisters around the world. I think there's going to be a stronger affinity of the global body of Christ, the one for the other. Uh, scripture is clear, if one member suffers, we all suffer. And I think that uh, now the Western church, the American church in particular, is going to have a stronger sense of identity with uh, our brothers and sisters who have suffered for the cause of Christ around the world. Uh, I'm grateful that during this very challenging season that the whole world has gone through uh, with the, the COVID virus, that there has been uh, a degree of, of uh, repentance and cleansing in the church. Uh, I don't know to what degree the Holy Spirit himself measures that, but I do believe it's preparatory for a greater work that the Spirit of God will do in our nation as well as many nations of the earth again. A great sweep of the Spirit of God. And you know, it's interesting, I, as a teenager myself and as a college student, I lived through the Jesus Movement and uh, the amazing release of creativity in the church and uh, systemic change in the church, which wasn't a rebellion, it was just all of this freshness and newness of, of newborn young believers coming into the church and asking the legitimate questions, well, why do you do it this way? And could we do it another way? And uh, uh, God used that for amazing transformation in the last great uh, national sweep of the Spirit, which was uh, the Jesus movement. Now I believe that God's going to do it again. And I believe he has young people postured right now. And that's why I, I want to get with uh, young people. I started ministry, Daniel, in youth ministry. I'd like to go full circle and finish in youth ministry as well, just pouring uh, what the Lord has given to me uh, into the lives of young men and women who are themselves passionate for Jesus Christ. I think martyrdom is going to go up, uh, and I, I don't want to say that in any uh, particularly morbid way. Paul gave us a, a, a full assessment of all of that, that to depart and be with Christ is far better. That's not any kind of death wish. We want to fully fulfill all that God has for us uh, in our day. But we need not fear death. We're to be bold and winsome at the same time, uh, loving the lost, caring about a broken world, and ministering the grace of God by the power of His Spirit. And I see that coming on uh, men and women, young men and women, uh, around the world now and in our own nation as well. And I'm very, very grateful for that. God always has people in the wings who are ready. And those of us who have maybe been on the road for a little longer uh, can encourage and strengthen. I, I want to be the, the baton runner that is still at full strength when I pass the baton to the next runner and then I want to be there to yell encouragement and, and to strengthen him and inspire him in uh, his leg of the race. So I'm very thankful. Uh, I, I have no regrets. Uh, boy, I've got a magnificent wife who has stood with me for 48 years. She came from a very mission-hearted uh, family herself. Grew up in 
something of what was then the citadel of evangelicalism in uh, Winona Lake, Indiana, and heard many of those great uh, old preachers like Harry Ironside and others uh, who would come through proclaiming the gospel. So it's a rich heritage. I want to pass that heritage on. Uh, if, if in the banking world, if with something as neutral as money, and I realize that there are demonic things that can attach to money, but money itself is a neutral, but if in the banking world there is this nigh on to miraculous thing called compound interest, should we not see the same effect uh, with our own sons and daughters over two and three and four generations? A compound interest of the impact of the gospel on uh, individuals, on nations, on families in particular. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful for the impact of the gospel on our own family. Thankful for that preacher in, uh, in Bristow, Oklahoma, that uh, whoever he was, and I'm looking forward to meeting him when I get to heaven, uh, that was the man who was preaching when my dad came to faith in Christ. Thankful for that preacher in Oklahoma City uh, who was preaching when my mom came to faith in Christ in the 1920s. Uh, all of that has had amazing ramifications. Thankful for a great praying grandmother there in Bristow uh, who prayed for me as well as for her son, my father. So I, I, I'm just grateful. Jesus Christ has literally changed everything. Uh, I, Daniel, I couldn't be more grateful uh, to the Lord. I, I only wish that I would have been more fruitful, that I would have been uh, more sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, uh, bolder in obedience to the Lord. But uh, uh, if the Lord gives me more time, and I think He will, I, I, I want to ramp up the game and be more fruitful than I've ever been. I think we have even an illustration in nature, Daniel, uh, here uh, in, in the fall of the year that we have just experienced. Uh, leaves are at their most pungent and beautiful and brilliant uh, right before they die. And I think it should be the same way with us. We shouldn't get uh, weaker in faith or weaker in, in any way other than a physical body that has a shelf life that the Lord himself again is going to resurrect in mighty glory and power. But uh, that our most brilliant work, our most colorful, refreshing, beautiful work for Jesus uh, ought to accelerate toward the end of our lives. And that's what I'm praying uh, for me and for uh, others of my friends. And I, I think your organization is so beautiful because now your son Jonathan is leading the global advance and, and forging in new directions, and, right. and, and but still continuing to take the love of Jesus to, to people around the world. And so you see in, in your father who was a pastor, and in your life, and in your son's life, and then into the generations to come, that God is a, a generational God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And he doesn't just see one generation. He has a, a viewpoint that encompasses many generations right. and continues. And so I'm excited about what uh, my generation gets to do uh, for Jesus. Uh, Global Advance is continuing to go to many nations around the world, raising up leaders, training leaders in many different spheres of, of influence. If someone wanted to go to your, your website and make a donation to Global Advance, w what's your website? Well, thank you, Daniel. It's simply globaladvance.org. And I was just thinking here at this very table just a few minutes ago, we concluded a, uh, an online meeting with uh, Christian leaders in, in Indonesia. And I'm very, very thankful that uh, the Lord has allowed us to live in a day where there are tremendous communications possibilities. I feel that we can say, as Paul said, from a jail cell, he said, you know, I'm personally bound, I'm personally isolated, but uh, the Word of God is not bound. And we see that in the same way. It's been a very strange and uh, prayerfully uh, untypical year. And yet, even though we ourselves have been limited in, in our own capacity to, uh, to go, the Word of God itself is never bound. And I'm so grateful for uh, the gospel getting out on many platforms and new platforms that are even this very day being uh, conceived and being worked on 
and they will be vehicles for the gospel. Uh, the gospel of Daniel has always traveled, as you know, on roads, and the Pax Romana uh, that allowed a, uh, a fairly safe passage of people throughout the Roman Empire and believers uh, who were going on those roads uh, built by Rome or by that empire were carrying the gospel as they went. Uh, we have a, <laughs> a Pax Technologia today uh, where we have all of these opportunities uh, to get the gospel out rapidly. I say to, to young men in ministry, you realize that starting today, you can have a worldwide ministry simply by the click of, of, a, of a few buttons. And so there's all these opportunities. And I, I just want to appeal to your listeners because I know they're listening because they're interested in getting the gospel out. Let's take every avenue possible to get the gospel out. Uh, Billy Graham, in one of his final addresses to the evangelists that he had convened at one of his great meetings in Amsterdam for itinerant evangelists, said, uh, let's use every legitimate means and every ounce of our strength to get the gospel out. That's my appeal to us as well. Every legitimate means, every ounce of our strength, animated and breathed on by the, the life-giving spirit of the living God. Let's get the gospel into the minds, into the hearts, into the ears of people uh, around the world, and then the spirit of God himself will do what only he can do in taking that wonderful good news and drawing people to a real relationship with God through faith in his son. Amen. Thank you for joining me on the Evangelism Podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you, Daniel. My great privilege. Daniel King is on a mission to save one million souls a year, but he can't do it alone. Would you consider sowing a financial seed today? To give, please visit www.kingministries.com.